Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. How are you, friends? It's so good to see you. Um, welcome, Holy Spirit. I just want to talk about a topic that has been heavily on my mind. And it has to do with the worship times. What is your worship time? What is your worship time? Out of seven days a week, 24 hours each day, what time have you designed for God, your creator? Many Christians, I observe that many Christians are willing to give away their worship times just to get some dollars, some pounds, some euros, some naira. How much can I give you to buy your worship time? There's something called mental slavery. Many people are slaves of the dollar. They are slaves. I'm telling you, it's very sad situation. And the Lord is calling his children to go back to dedicating time for him some people their worship time is not sunday morning their worship time is saturday evening you shouldn't be working on saturday evening if the day of your your service to god the day you are supposed to go to your to the house of god is saturday evening then you shouldn't be at work saturday evening for any reason sunday you can work if your worship time is not sunday you can work on sunday if your worship time, for instance, there are people that have home cell, that is their worship time. They meet for a house fellowship. Maybe five Christians gather in a home. That's their worship time. They should not be working at that time for anybody, for any reason. There's something called freedom of religion. People died so that we can worship God freely. Moses went to Pharaoh and said, we want our worship time back. Here are the children of God, slaves. They couldn't worship their God anymore. And Pharaoh says, I'm not giving you back your worship time easily. Okay, let the men go. Let the women stay. Okay, let the, you can go, but leave your flocks behind. Moses have to use force to overturn foolishness, to say, no, give me back my worship time. Now, I understand if there's a temporal situation, like if you're in school and your, your, your courses, you have some courses, temporal situation, trainings, fine, I understand that. But when it is within your power, or yes, if some people are slaves, you know, they work in some jobs that, you know, maybe they did not know, they signed up for it, they work seven days a week, their employer is their guard. Some people are in slavery. Right now, there are people who are in some countries where there are no employment laws, like some people that live in Libya. I've heard stories where they are not even allowed to see the sunlight. That's a different situation. But I'm saying that when it's within your power, don't sell your worship time. Don't sell your worship time to anybody. Don't sell, oh, we're going to give you double pay. No, on this day, on this day, I've dedicated it to God. Here's, tell you what. If you sell your worship time, there, there's afflictions that can come in your life. Your dollar cannot solve your affliction. Your pounds cannot solve that affliction. Who's going to help you on that day? Your employer will betray you, will kick you out. Your business cannot solve that affliction. So you have to be careful. There are people who they used to take their children to church. Oh, now I'm sorry, children. I can't take you to church. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm walking. When the day of evil comes... Yes, there is a day of evil for everybody. <laughs> there is a day. Everybody has a day of evil. Whether you are spiritual or you are not spiritual. That is why even we have Psalm 91. Where we are asking God, deliver us from the day of evil. What are you going to do if you are not covered? The day of evil. The day of evil. The day of evil. The day of evil. God bless you. The day of evil. What are you going to do? How can a parent say, there are parents that used to take their kids to church, to Bible-believing church. At least let the child hear the word of God. Let their conscience be soft. 
They stop taking them to church. Oh, I have to work. You know, we have to put roof over our head. Good. Put the roof over the head. But be careful because affliction can come. And that affliction, arrow, problem. Oh, it's going to be more than that money that you are thinking you're getting. It's going to be more. When the children start involving in some things and you have to go to court. Come on now. It happens. I have seen it. It's not somebody told me. You would take time off that work to go to that court. You will spend all that money you thought you were earning. It happens sometimes in some families. You never know what category your family falls in. See, you yourself know your relationship with God. I myself know my relationship with God. You know your category. I know my category. Everybody stay in your lane. Your relationship with God is not my relationship with God. Because you are doing something does not mean I should go and do it. I might go and do it and it's me that something will happen to. You've been doing it. For instance, people drink alcohol. Oh, Jesus turned water into wine. I call them pacifier Christians. Oh, you know, we don't judge. Don't judge. You, you go and drink alcohol. And it is you that God um, arrested. It's you that entered an accident. It's you. Other people, we are doing it. Find out your relationship with God. What is your covenant with God? There are people that their covenant with God is, you better be in the house of God. You better be in the house of God. You better gather your, your, your children and worship God. Yes, it is the fact. Other parents are, are, are making dollars and leaving their kids at home. Their kids are still fine. They turn out right. You, the day you leave the children home, it is you that your children got in drugs. It's you that your children got in alcohol. So you better do what is right within your power. You cannot trade your worship time for to hell with those dollars. To hell with it. I repeat, to hell with it. And I'll say it again. To hell with any dollars, any pounds, any naira, any shillings, any currency that wants to take my time from God. To hell. To hell. Listen. The blessing of the Lord make rich, it add no sorrow with it. The blessing of the Lord, it make rich, it add no sorrow with it. The blessing of the Lord, start, every job is not from heaven. Some jobs are from hell. Some jobs are from hell. Devil gave you that job. You thought it was God. It's devil. How can you not be in the house of the Lord for 365 days of the year? Even God rested on the seventh day. So if your worship time is Wednesday, out of seven days a week, 24 hours a day, you, you shouldn't be in the job place on that Wednesday evening. Now, somebody will say, but Uche, so, um, my worship times are Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I'm not asking you to be in church Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Pick one day. One day. One day. Maybe pick Fridays. All right. Please, Fridays, I have to be. But you can't miss all the services because of a job. What kind of job is that? Who are you? Are you the, is that the only job in the world? What kind of job is that? Would the place shut down because you went to church for just two hours of your life? Two hours. Hmm. Let me tell you something. The devil has taken the worship time of most of the children of God slightly slickly and he has put a spirit of chickenly cowardice on many christians they can tell you the pastor oh pastor i can't come because uh, you know my job my job you can't face the boss to tell the boss no on this day no we have even pastors um, wives that are working on sunday why can't you tell them you're a minister i have a life after outside this job now you can work after church after church, for instance, if your worship day is Monday, you can decide, okay, I'm getting off work at four. My worship time is five. I'll get up off at four. I will go. You can still come back to the job. I'm not saying take the whole day off. If it's a business, for instance, you have employees under you. Tell your employees, hey guys, my worship day is Saturday. On Saturday, you guys going to cover this place. The business is not going to burn down because you went to the house of God for two hours, three hours. I want to say this and I want to say it as it is. If you die, if you die before you are buried, your job position will be filled. So why have a false sense of illusion that without you, the world will not move. Without you, this job will not move. 
We have people of other religions at that job. Why can't they do it? After all, the tourist country, I won't mention the name. This is a tourist country. They are of some kind of religion. I won't mention the name. They have their day of worship. People are still going there. The country is not shutting down. Immigrants are happy to do the job. That's what I heard. On a certain day, people go. And the country did not shut down. Their businesses are still booming. Christians are still giving testimony when they get a visa to that country. Please. Foolishness must be addressed. Somebody say, well, Uche, are you not being too harsh? No. Pharaoh, you need to be harsh to Pharaoh in the spirit realm. Or they will take everything that belongs to you. They will take your mind. They will take your children. They will take your worship day. They will take your spouse. Spare Pharaoh will take everything that be. They will take your sleep. They will take everything about you. So you have to be radical. Radical. Freedom is radical. Some of us immigrants, we are so happy to be in the U.S. <laughs> oh, I'm in the U.S. <laughs> Do you know the price that the fathers and mothers paid for us to be here? Do you know? Do you know their tears? Do you know the pain for freedom? That's why I don't disrespect my African-American community. Their fathers and mothers paid the price. That's why we are here. The price of freedom is costly. Don't let anybody take away your freedom don't let anybody i repeat anybody nobody is worth it even your spouse is not worth it oh yes if you marry somebody of another religion and they tell you you should not go to church you know my, my wife she don't why shouldn't you go to church they are trespassing your right to worship god is number one now you made the mistake and married them now they won't well, all you have to do, repent for the mistake. I didn't ask you to leave. But let the person know. We're going to worship. This happened to somebody I know. Oh, her husband doesn't want her taking the kids. No. They have to go and worship. So you want the person to just be home? A right. You have a right to worship your God. Don't let anybody take away your right. You see this Bible? I take it with me to the job place. I have a right. After all, listen, listen. Oh, mm -hmm. Halloween comes and witchcraft is everywhere. Do they ask your opinion? Do the witches apologize to you? Halloween is a full-blown witchcraft holiday. You can say it and you can, if you like, you can make it fun or whatever. See, Halloween is a full-blown witchcraft holiday. Any Christian that is practicing Halloween will go to hellfire. Now, on Halloween day, do they ask your opinion? They're putting witchcraft everywhere. They're showing witchcraft. Even Christians, they'll tell you, come to the Halloween work party. I was about to go to one. My husband said, you are not going. We don't practice this. Why is it that the enemies and the dark people are bold? Yes. The enemy and the dark people are bold. But why are Christians so timid? Why are many Christians so timid? Why can't we say, this is us. Accept it as it is. In fact, it's a command. We worship God in spirit and in truth. Don't worship your boss. Don't worship the dollar. Don't worship America. Worship God. Worship God. Don't worship yourself. One day it's going to come. You have to retire. You see, the, the Halloween for festival. Ah, I will stay indoors. That is it. That is it. We don't have to be uh, feeling among. Oh, I don't want them to think I'm antisocial. What do you mean antisocial? People that are smoking, smoking, do they ask your opinion? People that are drinking, do they ask your opinion? The 80s, why as a Christian can you not be bold and say, this is me? In seven days a week, everybody must have a worship day. It doesn't have to be Sunday morning. It could be Sunday evening. Sunday evening, sorry, no. Don't even pick, call my phone. I'm not coming. I'm not coming in. Oh, Uche will give you double. To hell with you and your double pay. I don't want it. You can buy my worship time. You can buy my worship time. Hallelujah. You state it. State it. If your worship day is Wednesday, make it clear. On Wednesday evening, I have to leave early. Once a week. At least once a week. Please. I have to. This is the rebuke for the body of Christ. Enough is enough. There's so much foolishness taking place in the name of tolerance. There's so much foolishness taking place in the name of, Oh, I don't want to lose the job. Ah, I don't want to lose my job.
You are a slave to the opinions of men. You are a slave to the opinions of men. People will whisper, say, I'm doing too much. Uh, oh, yes. And that's, a, that's the one that irritates me. Your fellow Christian will tell you, oh, you are doing too much. What do you mean we are doing too much? Christianity, we have standards. We have standards. And one of our standards is go and worship your God. Other religions have their standard. Oh, I've been talking about somebody that I know praying in the workplace in America. You Christians are the same people that will say, oh, separate work and state. Uh, separate work and state. Uh, say, uh, how can we pray in the workplace? Well, if you won't pray in the workplace, people for that religion will pray in the workplace. And they will make accommodation for them. You keep be continue selling out your, your, your worship time. Be selling out everything. Just sell out, sell out. I call them Christ chicken pacifier behind licking hamburger and sprite Christians. Remove me and my bloodline. Now let's talk about the school system. Tell your children why should your children be reading witchcraft books? You are a Christian mother and you are watching. Your, your child is reading, bringing home witchcraft book and you are watching. No, you go to the school and let the teacher know. My children do not read witchcraft books. Do not give my child a witchcraft book. Go. Why should, oh, I don't want my child to be left out. I, I don't want them to think I am a... No. Christianity has standards. As a Christian, we don't partake of witchcraft. When Halloween comes, you go to the school. You call the school. Please, our religion. If you're doing arts and craft, coloring witches, do not give my child a, a art and craft with witchcraft on it. Do not. You can give my child to color the fall, color pumpkins. That's fine. But don't, don't involve my child in witchcraft. You have to make it clear. Otherwise, your child will come back with Harry Potter. <coughs> you got it. Your child will come back with Harry Potter. Oh, this is the literature we're supposed to read. Why should Christian children be subject to witchcraft? Why? Children are being subject to witchcraft. Why? And we're just watching. So passive. What will the founding fathers who fought for religious freedom be saying? What are they going to be saying? These Christians, you are chicken. And you're watching something happening. You're watching your power being taken away. Day by day. Day by day. Day by day. Look, they took their worship day. Oh, you know, um, this is a capitalist society. I cannot tell my boss. They took the worship day. You didn't care. They took your children's mind. You don't care. Oh, you know, you know, uh, separation of church and state. My child can be reading with. No, you have to teach your children. In the cafeteria, you pray. Pray boldly in the cafeteria. See. Every child should have a Bible in their backpack. I repeat, every Christian child needs to have a Bible. It doesn't have to be this big. Put a Bible in their backpack. Start putting it. Oh my God, I'm arresting right now. I took Bibles I gave to some young men. I know their mom. Later, I was told somebody put drugs in their hands. That's what we are dealing with. You got to be fierce. You have to understand the times. People will say you are doing too much. Yes, thank you. I'm doing too much. People will tell you, calm down. This. Yes, but the principalities that are after your children, the principalities that are after your faith, they are very fierce. They are not backing down. So you too, don't back down. Make it very clear. In this house, we don't do witchcraft. You go to the school, make it clear. One time I was teaching in the school. They gave me a book to read to little kids. Oh, read the good old witch. I said, no, my religion don't permit me. I can read about witchcraft to children. Why should I be asked to read me? Be asked to read a book, the, the good old witch to little children. Why can't we portray devil as good to little children? That's what your children are dealing with. Better be involved in their life. Better know what is happening. Better make it clear in the school. My child, please remove my child from you people's diabolic activities. I want to pray. America is no longer the nation under God Almighty. It's the truth. It is the truth. We are living in Sodom and Gomorrah. It is the truth. It is the raw truth. 
where witchcraft is is tolerated and celebrated and it's like oh it's okay <laughs> even christians will tell you it's normal i don't i don't eat halloween candy to hell with your candy i don't eat those candy candy that is enchanted they've put spell on it in a in a witchcraft bowl they give to you you eat we're going to pray for revival. And after that, I have to go. Oh, Masakata. Rapakose. You see, when you are angry, don't be angry because of dollars or house or car. Be angry at the iniquity of your generation. Be angry. When somebody wants to take your worship day, be angry. Say no. Don't be angry because of all oh, um, my Brazilian hair got wet in the rain. That's not what you should be angry about. Be angry about destiny. What is going to happen to the fate of the next generation? At this rate, where are we going? The fate of the next generation is at stake. Is at stake. Do you understand the times? Do you understand the, 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 the times we're living in? May we not betray the next generation for a mess of pottage. Daniel said something. Daniel said something. Daniel said, please, the king told him, I want to give you money to interpret a dream. He said, no, keep your money. That is how the old righteous men did. They spoke to kings. They told kings, no, 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 don't turn me into a sorcerer. Now, all of you that you go to churches, you are sowing seed for prophecy. Oh, don't judge, don't judge. You are sowing seed. We, things Jesus never practiced. Please stop it. Stop it. You don't pay for a prophecy. You don't sow seed for prophecy. Freely we have received. Freely give. I will touch that topic on another day. Don't sell your generation for a mess of pottage. Don't sell your, your birthright for a mess of pottage. I have it in mind to homeschool Josiah. The way they are teaching for an... <laughs> this one is another topic. <laughs> It's another topic. It's another topic. <laughs> Mothers, wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Fathers, wake up. The responsibility is not for the women. Oh, mothers should be the one praying. No, fathers, you gotta wake up. We have a lot of weak men. Weak. Weak men. They are not taking responsibility. Who's gonna take care of your kids for you? Men, wake up. Moses, Moses went to Pharaoh and said, our men must worship. Women must worship. Children must worship. Animal must worship. Everybody from top to bottom, the servant must worship. He didn't say, oh, only the women will go and worship. The women will cover the family. No. Everybody must, make, must wake up. Even the babies, sucking babies must worship God. Teach the children. Teach them. Last time I saw a four-year-old with a Bible. I taught him the Bible. I saw it with my eyes. Another four-year-old child or five-year-old was telling him the Bible is not true. Your children are going to fight for their faith. At four years old, I had to tell him, please, if any of your friends tell you the Bible is not true, rebuke your friend. Tell your friend, no, the Bible is true. At four years old, he's fighting for his faith. At five years old, he's fighting for his identity. At five, at two years old. Ay, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Identity. The children are fighting for their identity. <laughs> My people, do you know the times? Do you know the times? Don't be feeling so secure. You know, in the book of Revelation, it talks about the church that felt like, oh, you know what? I'm rich. I'm well fed. We are not like other nations. But Jesus said, you guys are pitiable. You guys are poor. You are wretched. You are blind. Sorry. That's the state of most of the American church. That's the state of most of the church in Europe. It is wretched. It's naked. In fact, most of the church around the world, there's a great falling away. There's lukewarmness. There's nonchalant attitude. Where is the fire of revival that burnt in our fathers? Don't judge. Don't judge. I don't want to offend people. Pacifier Christianity. Wake up. Do we have any question? I'm about to pray. I ask, and, I, and what I want to pray is, see, your worship time is a spiritual activity. They take it from you in the spirit. So you have to collect it back first in the spirit before you collect it back in the physical. I repeat, your worship time is a spiritual activity. 
They collected from you in the spirit. Remember, Pharaoh was dealing with the gods of the land. Pharaoh will go to the Nile River, do divination, 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 put the people in mental bondage in the spirit. While Christians slept, your enemies were doing incantation. Your enemies were confronting their God. Right now, we pray for deliverance in the United States. The Christians to wake up. The children to wake up. Oh God, begin to pray. God, have mercy. Send revival fire. Oh my sacred debosha. Oh my sacred debosha. Reke pako sata paso tepe. Masaka paraka soko posha. Raka saka tapa rokosa. Masaka parapa koseketa. Who is going? My children are going. Who is going to worship God? My husband is going. Who is going to worship God? My generation is going. Let's go and worship God. 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 I'm going. My children are going. We will not bow to witchcraft. We will not bow to the gods of the dollar. We will not bow to the gods of Hollywood. We will not bow to the gods of Babylon. We will not bow to the gods of any country. The only God we would worship. It's God in heaven. Oh my God, here we are. We will worship you in spirit and in truth. We will not bow to the gods of alcohol. We will not bow to the gods of deception. We will not bow to the gods of lies. Oh God, right now in the name of Jesus. Isaiah said when he was praying, something was removed. Touch his mouth. Begin to ask God to remove from you cowardice. Spirit of being a coward. Spirit of chicken. Pacifier. Bottom licking. Hamburger and Sprite. Fast food Christian. These are Christians that will end in hell. Say, God, remove that thing from me. Make me a fire. Anywhere I go, I have to declare. I have to build my own altar. And it's the altar of prayer. It's the altar of praise oh god i pray i pray that you deliver me from fear the bible says the fear of man will prove to be a snare begin to ask god for the fire for the nations the fire for the nations the battle acts of god god you are my battle acts with you i can break the nations with you i can teach the truth i receive the anointing the bible says you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes on you. You will be my witnesses. I receive spiritual power. I receive spiritual power. I receive spiritual power. 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 Power to become. Power to overcome. Power to take a stand. Power. 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 Father, we thank you. Oh my God. Father God, we pray. Rapa papa sa. Rapa kasa kata rabasha. Rapa soko robo soko poso. Father, please fulfill your purpose in my life. Fulfill your purpose in the lives of those watching. Forgive our sins. Write our name in the book of life. Make us a fire. Father, deliver us. You know, sometimes these lukewarm Christians, they will contaminate your fire. It's the truth. They will tell you you are doing too much. They will tell you you are judging. They will be... Father, if I have to walk alone in this season, so be it. I'm not encouraging walking alone, but sometimes you have to walk alone because you are on your own, really. When you are a remnant, you are a remnant. People, some people would say, "Oh, you are doing too much. You are doing this because they like sin. They are comfortable with sin." Say, God, sometimes your kids have to walk alone if they're in a neighborhood where everybody is doing gangs. Your kid have to walk alone sometimes. Say, God, if me and my family, remember the days of Noah. Noah had to walk alone. Noah had to gather his family, just them, into the ark. He preached and preached and preached. They didn't listen to him. Animals listened to him. Father God, we are going into the ark. 
We are going into the ark. Come on, begin to enter the ark. I'm taking my children, my babies, both born and unborn, into the ark. Into the ark. The ark of covenant. Oh my God. Oh my God. We hide in that ark. We hide in that ark from the intrigues of men. We hide in that ark from Pharaoh's sword. We are hiding from Pharaoh's sword. Moses' mother had to hide the baby. If she did not hide the baby, they would drown the baby. Joseph had to pick the child. Pick the child and run. Pick the child and run. For they have seen his star. They have come to kill that child. Joseph said, carry the baby Mary. Let's go. They had to go. They had to go. Father, show us where you want us to go. Plant us where you want us to be. Help us fulfill our assignment. The people you have sent us to speak to, plant us there. Some of you have dream of preaching to people in the dream. But you can't preach to people where you are because they don't listen to you. Maybe you are sent to strange tongues and you don't know. That's why you have to pray that God, who am I sent to? Who am I sent to? Jonah was sent to Nineveh. You are not sent to everybody. Your teachings, your revelation, your message, your purpose is not for everybody. I'm so sorry to say. Don't waste your time. Say, God, send me, plant me on my assignment in the name of Jesus. The battle is the Lord's. The battle is the Lord. Josiah will serve God. Josiah will serve God. Josiah is a battle axe for his generation. Josiah will go to his school and be the light. Not one day will his mother or his family cry over him. Every child, they will serve God. Christian children will serve the Lord. Christian children will read their Bible. Christian children will be high on the Holy Ghost. Father, we thank you for the victory. Above all, help us make heaven on that day. In Jesus Christ's name we have prayed. Amen. I got to go. See, please, when you are getting married, don't marry an unbeliever. Don't contaminate your bloodline. Period. Oh, Uche, I'm the one that will change him. No. Sorry, no. I say it as it is. Because I don't want you to spend the rest of your life in bondage. You are telling your child, read Bible. The other person is saying, read another book. You are telling the child, let's go worship. The other person is saying, don't mention Jesus in this home. You don't want to put yourself or your next generation in that. Let me tell you what my husband is doing while I'm praying. Look at him. He is praying. He is praying. Can you see him? He's praying. He's in full support. Not telling me, oh, stop praying. You are doing too much. Please, marry of the same religion. Oh, Uche, you can't tell people who to marry. I will tell you. If you come to my platform, I'll tell you. If you ask me question, I'll tell you. If somebody is not a Christian, don't marry the person. You are ruining your life. A lady told me, I didn't know. Nobody told me. Why would they tell you? You're in a pacifier church. You are in bottom licking churches. They don't tell you the truth. Oh, we don't want to offend people. We don't want to offend people. And people are getting into bondage. The lady said, I didn't know. And right now, her husband says, we don't want you to take the kids to church. I said to the lady, man, we'll be praying for him that God should save him. But tell your children and tell your children, children. Marry only a child of God. If the person is not a Christian, don't bring them to me. I will not be a partaker. Tell your children. Don't tell your children it's okay. So far as there's love, you can bring an atheist. No. No. We are continuing a legacy. Legacy did not start with me. Legacy will not end with me. Godly legacy did not start with our generation. And we will not be the one to end godly legacy. Because of, oh, I, I need a ring on my finger. I need a ring on my finger. My friends are getting married. The pastor prophesied I'll be, I'll be married by the end of the month. Pacifier Christians. Distance yourself from them. I'm not saying you shouldn't go to church. Go, but go, but just come out quickly. Don't enter deep before they contaminate your fire. Spend more time with the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you the truth. They will contaminate you. They will. They will tell you you are doing too much. They will tell you, oh, don't. I was just telling my husband. I was telling him about that. So please, be around people that tell you the truth. Better you know the truth, you make heaven, than you are they're, they're doing like this. We don't want to offend you. You can drink a little alcohol. 
drink a little alcohol and your bloodline is dealing with drunkenness, your father died because of alcohol, your uncle died because of alcohol, your pastor cannot look you in the eye and tell you that, no, if you drink, stop it as a Christian, especially if you have problems in your bloodline. Have you seen sons that are drunk? They can't even go to work. And you're telling fellow Christians, you can try a little bit of wine. Jesus turned water into wine. Is that your bloodline? You know what's good for you. You know what's in your bloodline. You better fall in place. I got to go. Huh. Let's just say thank you, Jesus, because I got to go. Does anybody have any question before I leave? Please, don't join these pacifier Christians. There was a day, it was Wednesday. I was supposed to be in church in Nigeria. I traveled. I said I'm going to be in church on Wednesday. Last second, I changed my mind. I was home. Three men knocked on my door. We don't know if they're armed. I don't know if they're kidnappers. I don't know if they're armed robbers. I don't know who they are. And they were like, there's a stolen cell phone. We're going to search your house. And I'm like, who are you? Who are you? Who are you? They start screaming they're like i'm gonna take you uche favor to the police station um, and we don't know if they're kidnappers the car was on mark there was no badge nothing they fought me they quarreled with me they quarreled with my husband we, we are begging them begging them begging them they said no we must go with somebody today to where in nigeria where there's a lot of atrocity look that was the day i was supposed to be in church why did that happen to me? It taught me a lesson. Never trade your worship time. There's something God wants to protect you from. There's something God wants to protect your children from. Your bloodline from. Don't be that mother that you stop church. Your grandmother took you to church. Your great-grandmother took you to church. When it came to your own generation, because of a couple of dollars, are you the only one that has bills? Are you the only one that has bills? Is that the only job? Are you the only one that pays bills? I pay bills. I pay bills. I live in US, but I don't work on my worship day. Don't be fooled by these stupid philosophies. Oh, you know when you live in Europe, you have to work on Sunday. Oh, you you if you live in um, America, you you have to work. There, there is no time anymore. You won't be able to read your Bible. Don't be fooled by those rubbish. People tell you, no, you can't fast. You know, in America, you can't fast. In America, you can't preach. You know, in America, what do you mean? Is America heaven? To hell with it. To hell. I repeat, to hell. Is America heaven? You gave your worship time because of a visa? Because you live in America? So what? America cannot change the Bible. America cannot change the Bible. Oh, you know, the Supreme Court said this. So the Supreme Court is your God. If the Supreme Court tells you that this is okay, you follow. There's a generation that don't know the difference between right and wrong. Go. They don't know the difference between right and wrong. Oh, since the Supreme Court says it's okay, it's okay if I do it. No. Standard is the Bible, not the Supreme Court. Standard is the Bible. Yes, follow the law, respect the law. But that's not the determinant of right and wrong. Any government can come up and come up with anything. Right and wrong is in the Bible. Teach your children. Your teacher said this is okay. I don't care who that teacher is. Your teacher could be a satanist. Satanist has infiltrated the school system. Witches are teaching your children. Wizards are teaching your children. Whether you believe it or you don't want to believe it. So you have to start teaching smoking. Stop showing kids just picture Bible. Teach them real verses. Teach them how to pray. Teach them how to plead the blood of Jesus. Stop telling them, oh, a scary dragon, scary dragon. Tell them. The Bible defines the dragon as the devil. We don't play with dragons. We don't play with Satan. We Come on now. Ah! Christians have not done well. Many Christians, only a few are doing well. They have thrown the faith to the ground. But today we are the remnant. We will speak the truth. Who love you, we love you. Who hate you, we hate you. It doesn't matter. The main thing is heaven. Let's pray again. Say, God, I'm taking a stand from today. I'm taking a stand from today. 
I don't care who likes me. I don't care who hates me. If something is against my faith, if something is trying to take my worship time, I'm taking a stand today. I'm telling the truth. Like in the days of Noah, I'm screaming on the mountains. Oh, people will say, you are judgmental. Let them say I'm judgmental. I'm taking a stand today. Father, forgive us for this coward checking Christianity. I remove myself. I remove my bloodline. I remove my children. I remove my children, children from it. I'm going to be who God has called me to do. I'm going to do what God has placed in my heart. I receive supernatural power. I receive supernatural power. I receive supernatural power. Your, your, your friends are dying for their faith in, in northern Nigeria. Standing for their faith. You cannot stand for your faith in Halloween. In America that we call a, a religious freedom. What kind of Christianity are we dealing with here? It irritates my soul. It sickens my spirit. I can't deal with these people pleasing Christianity. I can't deal with this uh, oh, people pleaser Christianity. Oh, Muppet. So pastor are now Muppet. Oh, I can't say this because uh, my financial member is involved in it. No, even if your financial member is involved in adultery. You tell the person, save their soul. They're going to leave the church. To hell with them and their money. If I cannot change the gospel for you. Somebody will say, Uche, that's being too harsh. God has called us to love. But that's what Peter told the man. The man was trying to give him money to buy the gift of God. He said, to hell, your money perish with you. That's the apostles of old. They stood up to kings. They stood up to authorities. They spoke. Peter told them, if you don't repent, you will perish. In Acts chapter 2, he didn't say, oh, you know, God loves you. God cannot send you to hell. This type of, uh, of, of, of Christianity, irritating Christianity, making the mockery of the gospel. You are welcome. You are over welcome. Welcome. Tell people the truth. Heaven is real. Hell is real. Tell them, I don't do these types of marriages in our ministry. Adultery marriages. Don't bring it to me. I told our members, I said, please, if you know you are going to take somebody's spouse and you want me to bless it, remove me from it. I told them. Of course, people, we are not happy. Some have left the ministry because I said it. But me, to go and you went and took somebody's husband and you want me to bless it? Because of what? I cannot trade my voice. You went and took somebody's wife. Then you now want the pastor to bless it. I said, pastor, when they bring those things to you, tell them. Sorry, we don't do this here. Tell them. In our church, you can't be serving alcohol. How can you be serving alcohol in a church party? Members are there. They are serving alcohol. And the pastor cannot rebuke them. The pastor cannot rebuke them. The pastors cannot. The pa pastors are muppets. 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 Most of these pastors have become muppets. They have become slaves of the people. They are slaves of tithe. They are slaves of offering. They are slaves of dollar. They are slaves. They cannot say the truth again. Members are doing wedding, playing worldly music, and they have the audacity to invite you. And you come, okay, uh, Jesus turned water into wine. You two, you start dancing worldly music with them. Instead of rebuking the, the generation, tell them the truth. Tell them, don't play worldly music and you're inviting church member. Tell them the truth. Tell them the truth. Tell them the truth. Tell them. We don't dress seductively to the house of God. Look at them in their face and tell them. Who stay, stay, who live, live. This Muppet, Muppet, Muppet. So let, let, let's talk of politics now. Politicians are turning pastors into Muppets. Can you endorse my political party? You hear a pastor say, the Lord say you will win. Instead of telling the politician, repent, repent, let God's will be done. You might win or you might not win. We have these Muppet pastors that will be saying, the Lord says that uh, this party is going to win and that party will not win. You are bringing a disgrace to the name of God. Is this what Billy Graham taught us? Founding fathers like Rehan Bucky. Is that what they taught us? Is that what they did? Please. It's time to take a stand as a minister of the gospel. Stop being the people's puppet. Tell them what God told you to tell them. Tell them 
who stays there, who lives, lives. But tell them, let the blood of this generation not be in your head. Let's say, God, please cut down the power of deception. Deception is a spirit, it's a puppet. Cut it down from today. We will tell the people the truth. Tell your family members the truth. You are in a family reunion and they ask your opinion. Oh, um, uh, Stephanie, what do you think about this? Tell them the truth. Don't say, no, I don't want to offend. Tell them the truth. That might be the last time they are hearing the gospel. They say, do you think hell is real? Don't say, oh, hell, I don't know if hell is real. Hell is a parable. No, you tell them the truth. Hell is real. Hell is real. Hell is real. <laughs> hell is real hell is real heaven is real hell is real tell your family when your sister comes to you i met this married man i like him no no he's married run away tell them the truth tell them the truth as immigrant you are married in your country and you are getting married here my dear you're on your way to hell because you can't be married in your country and you are doing marriage here again to somebody. You lie to the person that you are single. You lie to them to get paper from them. You lived with them for two years, collected your permanent resident and divorced them. And you say you are a Christian. Then you not even have the other city to go to the puppet behind licking churches and go and give a testimony. God has blessed me with a green card. That is a green card from the devil. That blessing is from the devil. Remove God out of it. What you need to be doing is to be repenting and say, God, I'm sorry for engaging in abomination because I worship the US. I worship England. I worship having a permanent stay in this Babylonic systems and I have fallen into this Babylonic system. That's what you should be doing. Not telling the pastor, oh, I have a testimony. I met a young girl. I'm a married man, but I met a young girl. I married her, lived with her two years, divorced her, collected my papers. Yay! Praise God. I'm a, I'm a citizen. You sold your, your heavenly citizen because of earthly citizenship. God forgive us. I love you. Do people still love me after this? Because I love you. <laughs> Very sad, but this is the truth. Very sad, but this is the truth. I have to go. I love you. Bye-bye, guys.